The Elephant Island Chronicle's Presence The Woman Who Married an Owl by Anne Virginia Culbertson Foreword by Jao Marin Narration by Amazon Polly Foreword In the rich tapestry of American folklore, few threads are as vibrant and enduring as those spun by the Native American communities. The Woman Who Married an Owl, collected and retold by Anne Virginia Culbertson in her seminal work, American Indian Fairy Tales, represents a remarkable effort to bridge cultures and preserve the stories of a people deeply intertwined with the rhythms of the natural world. This tale, like many in the collection, transcends mere entertainment. It serves as a portal into the spiritual and moral landscape of the tribes along the eastern seaboard of the United States. In it, the natural and human realms intermingle through the mystical union of a woman and an owl, offering readers a glimpse into the complex interplay of respect, fear, and reverence that characterizes many Native American interactions with the animal world. Culbertson's work comes from deep admiration and respect for these stories and their tellers. By the time these tales were recorded, many of the oral traditions that had sustained them were under threat. In preserving them, Culbertson ensured that future generations would know of these rich narratives and honored the wisdom and storytelling prowess of a culture that has often been marginalized in the broader American narrative. As we turn the pages of this collection, let us approach with an open heart, ready to learn, reflect, and be transformed by the profound wisdom of these stories. Let us appreciate the effort to capture such fleeting oral traditions and recognize the importance of such work in fostering a deeper understanding and appreciation among diverse cultures. This foreword, therefore, is not just an introduction to a tale, but an invitation to witness the magic and mystery of a world where every creature and every action holds a deeper meaning where the boundaries between the human and the spiritual are as fluid as the turning of a page. Welcome to a journey through the heart of America's indigenous storytelling heritage. Jio Marin, the woman who married an owl. When the children got home from the nutting expedition and had eaten supper, they sat around discontentedly, wishing every few minutes that their mother had returned. I wish Mama would come back said Ned. I never know what to do in the evening when she isn't home. I low bout the best you all can do is to let me put you to bed, said Aunt Franny. Don't want to go to bed. I'm not sleepy. Want to stay up, came in chorus from three pairs of lips. You chillin' is wusser than night owls, said the old woman. If you keeps on with dis settin' up all night business, I bone summer you gwine turn into one or day your big fussy owls with yaller eyes styrin', just the way little Mars kit doin' dis bay minute, trying to keep hisself awake. And dat minds me you the owl war turn hisself into a man, and if a owl can do dat, what's der hinner one or you all turnin' into a owl? I lack like to know. So you best come long up to bed, and if you is right spry getting ready. Maybe I'll hole in and tell you bout dat owl. The little procession moved upstairs, Cooney, the houseboy, bringing up the rear with an armful of sticks and some fat splinters of lightwood, which were soon blazing with an oily sputter. Cooney scented a story, and his bullet peg was bent over the fire an unnecessarily long time, as he blew valiant puffs upon the flames which no longer needed his assistance and arranged and rearranged his skillfully piled sticks. Quit dat foolishness, nigger, said Franny at last, and set down on de hoth and have Yosef. If you want her stay, why't you say so? Stitter blowin' Yosef black in de face. Now den, if y'all ready, I gwine begin. Dish yer what I gwine tell happen at de time or de ear, when de injuns was havin' their green con darns, and I reckon you all bout to ax me what dat is, so I s'pose I mought easy will tell you. Long in August, when the engines stop working the con, what we call layin' by the crap, 
Den they chewed most times tell ef twas when it'd be a good crap, so they meant to get ready for de darns nigh a month befyin. They went to de Medinson man and axed him fair to pint de day. De Medinson man he sawn out runners to tell if de, and de runners they cured membin strings with knots tied all long em, and give em ter de people fair to hep a member. De folks they cut off a knot from de string each day. And when de lost one done cut off, den de know de day fair de darns was come. And de Medinson man he sun out hunters too, fair to get game. And mo runners fair to cure hit tear de people sauce de mock cook hit and bring hit in. When de time come, de people gird to gear, and de Medinson man he took in some or de new con and some UV, all de craps and burnt hit, before de people was low de e any. Adder de burnin, den he took in a year a con in one han, and ax fair blessins and good craps with dat han, while he raise up tur han to de storm and de wind and de hail and beg em not to bring evil pun de people. Adder dat, they all made de breakfast off in rosin years er de new con, and den de darns begun and lasted fo days and fo nights. The men dress up in their best and the gals wearing gret rattles tied on their knees, that shook and rattled with evy step. The gal where I gwine tell bout was on her way home on the fourth night, and she was poful tired, cause dem rattles is monstrous heavy, and she been keeping hit up for nights on running. She was gwine through a dark place in the woods when suddenly she seed a young man all wrap up in a soft gray blanket and leaning gins a tree. His eyes was big and round and bright, and they seemed to boo and lack fire. Dim eyes drawed de gal and drawed de gal twill she warn't feared no mo, and she come nearer, and loss he put out his arms wrap up in the gray blanket and drawed her close, twill she lean ergin him and she look up in de big bright eyes and she say, War is you, war is you? And he say, Oo-goo-coo, oo-goo-coo. Dat was de trucky name for owl, but de gal ain't pay no tension to dat, for most are de engine men was name at her buds and beasties and sesh easy dat. At her dat, she used to go out to de woods evy night to see de young man, and she a losing out to him. War is you, war is you, and he'd answer, Ugu coo, ugu coo. That was de onies would he uver say, but de gal thought twas all right, for she done make up her men that he longed to nur tribe or engines war spoke different from her own people. Sights and dat, she love him, and when gals is in love, they think everything de man do is just bout right, and dis ain't your coding couples is no gret for talkin'. No how. The gal's daddy was dade and her and her mammy live all lone. So law she make up her men dat it be heap mo handy to have a man round the house. So she up and tell her mammy dat she done got mide. Her mammy say, You is, is you? Well, who de man? The gal say, Oo goo coo. Well, den, says her mammy, I reckon you best bring home dish yer. Ugu coo and see if we can't make him useful. A little good game, now and den, who'd suit my mouth right well. We ain't have ne'er pussin to do no huntin for us since yo daddy died. Mammy, says de gal, I's bleached to tell you dat my husband can't speak our language. All de better, says her mammy, says she. Dar ain't gwine be no trouble bout dat. Case I can do talkin' nuff for two, and I ain't want one dis at your back talkin' son-in-law's know how. So the next night the gal went off and commed back late wid the young man. Her mammy ax him in and gin him a seat by the fire, and dar he saw all wrap up in his blinket, with his high turnt way from the light, not sayin' nothin' to nobody. And the fire died down and the wind blewed monful outside, and dar he sot on and on, and when the women's went to sleep, dar he was settin still. But in the mornin' when they woke up, he was gone, and they ain't see hyar near hide of him all day. The next night he come ergin and bring the lotter game with him, 
and he put dat down at de do and set hisself down by de fire and stay dar, same as he befoe, not saying ne'er wood. Dat kind of ugger vexed de gal's mammy at loss, case she was wonder dis it your women's war no sooner gets what dey ax fair dan dey ain't cure bout hit no mo. She want son-in-law war can't talk, she git him, and den she want one war can answer back. She git him kinder jubis bout him, but she feared to say anything for fear he quit and she get no mo game. Thoot night he come on to mo with a passel or game, and she mighty chorus bout him by dat time. She say to Husef, Well, if I ain't got the curiousimest son-in-law in Dizzy Diggins, then I missed a question. I wonder what make him set with his face turnt from de fire and blink in his eyes all de time. I wonder why he ain't never on loose dat blanket, and why he glongs off fo de daylight and never comes back to de dark. Oh, mammy, says de gal, says she, ain't I told you he can't speak our language, and I speck he done come from dat one country where we year tell bout, way off yonner, and dat huckom he had her keep his blanket round him. I reckon he get so tired hunting all day. No wonder he had her blink his eyes to keep him open. But her mammy want sassified. Case hit mighty hard to hide off one or dizzy your prying women's. So she go outside and gar up some lightwood splinters and tow em on de fire, dis away, all you via sudden. Here the old woman rose and threw on a handful of lightwood, which blazed up with a great sputtering, and in the strong light she stood before the fire enacting the part of the scared owl for the delighted yet half-startled children. And when she thowed hit on, Aunt Franny proceeded, de fire blaze and spit and sputter just lack dis do, and de omen she fotched a yell and cried out she did, Lan or de musiful. What chorus sort of wood is dish your de ac lack dis? De owl he was startled, and he looked round sudden, dis away, over his shoulder, and de women's they let out a turble screech, case they seed twant nothing but a big owl set in dar blinkin. Owl seed he was found out, and he rids up and give his gret wide wings a big flop, lack dis, and swoop out to do crying, oo goo coo, oo goo coo, easy he flewed off into the darkness. Here Aunt Franny spread her arms like wings, and made a swoop halfway across the room to the bedside of the startled children. And, she continued, de wind howl monful all night long, and seemed her de gal and her mammy lack twas de voice of po o goo coo moanin for de gal he love. And didn't he ever come back? said Ned. No, Sue, dat he didn't. He was too shame to come back, and he been so shame or de trick you were since, dat he hide hisself way in de daytime and never come out till de dusk and then he goes sweepin' and swoopin' long on dem gret big soft wings, so quiet that he ain't mech to goes you via soon, jest looks like a big shatter flittin' round in de dusk. He tech dat time too, case he know dat bout den de little fiel mouses, and says she's he dat comes out and menses to run round, and woe be on ter um ef dey meets up with Mr. Owl, dees a goner show. But how could they think an owl was a man? asked Janie. Well, honey, the tale ain't tell dat. But I done study hit out dis away, that moan likely de gal been turnin' up her nose at some young engine man, and outer spite he done gone and got some witch to put a spell on her, sauce de owl ood look like a man, and she ood go and tow husef away on a old no coyote bood. Yas, I reckon dat was bout de way. And now y'all better shed up dem peepers or you'll be getting lacked owls, no good in the daytime, and wantin' to be up and prowlin' all night. The End From all of us here at the Elephant Island Chronicles, we hope you have enjoyed this classic short story by Anne Virginia Colbertson. Have a great day and stay curious. <laughs>